friends, I'm Emily Lay, and you're listening to The Simplified Podcast. If you're looking for a way to slow down and enjoy the parts of life that truly matter, then this is it. You have come to the right place. Every week, I share a few tips and tricks to get more enjoyment out of your days so that you can savor more of what's slow and sweet and good. Do you know what brings me joy? adorable office supplies. And I might be a little bit biased, but I think Simplified has some of the cutest office supplies and accessories I've ever seen. Where else can you get pineapple paper clips or a mini notebook in a beautiful navy hydrangea pattern or even a gingham pen? It's time to stock up, you guys. So head on over to emilylay.com to get your Simplified accessories and office supplies today. Welcome to summer. Isn't it just the best? I love soaking up the sun during the day, laying on the cool grass at night while we point out different constellations in the sky. I love watching my kids run around and make carefree summer memories that will last them a lifetime. But do you know what one of my favorite things to do is in the summer? Read. So we just installed a porch bed swing downstairs at our house uh, in our backyard. And it is the size of a twin bed. And it is a swing. And it is my new favorite place on planet Earth to sit and read and let the kids run around. Nothing is better than a porch swing with a book. But Let's be real. The real hero of the summer is reading because as things get a little slower at work, as school relaxes its grip, that means your schedule gets a little more flexible as well. And I love to fill that flex time with a few more books, whether that's taking a longer lunch break to read on my swing or turning on an audiobook while grilling dinner or grabbing a few quiet minutes during a vacation to pick up a novel. I have always been a big reader ever since I was a little girl, and I read all kinds of things, fiction and nonfiction. So I'm going to let you in on a few books I've been loving lately. So here they are, my top five picks for reading this summer. Number one, The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. First of all, let me just say that Kristen Hanna is a masterful storyteller, masterful. She's honest to goodness, one of the best writers out there and definitely one of my favorites. So The Four Winds starts out in Texas in 1921. And don't worry, there's no spoilers here. World War I has just ended and the land is filled with bounty. America is on the brink of a new and optimistic era. But Elsa Wolcott, our main character, has been deemed too old to marry. So don't forget, we're talking about 1921. Marriage was basically the only option for women at the time. But then Elsa meets Rafe Martinelli. And meeting Rafe completely changes the direction of Elsa's life. She ends up marrying Rafe while carrying their child. She leaves the only family she's ever known, a group of people that have never, ever treated her kindly, and moves on to Rafe's family farm. So fast forward a little bit to 1934, the world has changed again, and Texas has been devastated by drought. So we're thinking like the Dust Bowl era. Nothing is growing. There is no food or water for the animals or the people. And so while Elsa does everything she can to keep her kids safe and healthy, the dust storms become debilitating and force her to leave everything she's ever known for quote unquote greener pastures in the West. So what happens is we end up following this little family from Texas to California in the hopes that they will find work and safety. I want to preface this before you dive into this book. This book is sad. It's really sad. Um, But I think that that is one of the reasons I loved it so much. Um, it It just pulls at your heartstrings. And we've all read a million and one books about the joys of being a parent and loving our kids enough to do anything for them. But reading how Elsa lifted her entire life and moved without a plan or a future with the small hope of saving her kids, I mean, it just, it struck me right in the heart. The story is so, it's just so powerful. And it truly shows that motherhood can often feel like a war. Um, It's not always easy and fun and bright. Um, 
it is also a very long book, but you will find yourself so drawn into the story that you just you just can't put it down. And honestly, the English major in me loved so much all of the symbolism and the stories within stories. And someone in my book club actually said that Kristen Hanna writes the scene the environment, almost like a character. And so like, you just feel very invested there as well. It's just, oh, it's just like modern day, real literature. I could honestly go on and on. It's such a great book. Um, One quote that really stood out to me that I wrote down is this, a warrior believes in an end she can't see and fights for it. A warrior never gives up. A warrior fights for those weaker than herself. It sounds like motherhood to me okay, right? You see what I'm saying? It's a great book. Pick it up. This book is just so beautifully written and powerful and emotional. So before you dive in, make sure your tissue box is nearby, but it will become, I mean, it's like top, top 10 favorite books of all time for me. That's saying a lot because I've read a lot. (laughs) Number two, Her Dark Lies by J.T. Ellison. Well, first of all, J.T. Ellison is one of my very favorite thriller writers. And I love a good thriller. Love it. And JT and I have become Instagram friends, which basically means we're BFF in real life. Now, you guys, you've heard me talk about this before. You know how much my heart and soul loves a mystery. Um, They just make me happy. And I will tell you what, Her Dark Lies is a recent read for me. And I loved it. I was really grateful to have been sent an advanced copy from JT before it came out. Um, But it is so good. The story takes place on Isle Asola. I hope I pronounced that right, off the coast of Italy, which is not surprisingly the perfect setting for a wedding at the clifftop villa owned by the wealthy Compton family. The main character, artist Claire Hunter, plans to marry the handsome and charming Jack Compton. They'll be surrounded by the ocean air, friends and family, and of course, a host of dark secrets. But from the moment Claire arrives on the island, something just seems wrong. Skeletal remains are found nearby. There are a slew of menacing texts, a ruined wedding dress, and one dark cloud hanging over Claire and Jack's relationship. Like, uh, what happened to his first wife? Hmm. As a huge dark storm descends on the villa, the power goes out and it all goes downhill from there. JT is so good in all of her books, so good at writing a good story full of suspense. And I could not put this one down, like stayed up way too late, had to keep reading that kind of thing. It's so great. I loved the twists and the turns and it left me guessing all the way until the very end. Definitely a page turner. Highly recommend this one for you guys out there who love to crack the case while you soak up the sun. Number three, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This is a book that my book club, my local book club and I um, read together. It was a smash hit last summer and named a best book of the year by so many outlets. It's hard to name them all. The New York Times, The Washington Post, Time, NPR, Entertainment Weekly, Vanity Fair. So if you haven't read this one, now's the time to pick up a copy from your local bookstore or library. And here is what it's about. Growing up in a small southern black community, Stella and Desiree are identical twins who run away at 16. You had me at runaway twins. I had to know what happened. But as we get a look into their lives as adults, we learn that they couldn't be more different. One sister lives with her daughter in the same community she once tried to escape, and the other secretly passes for white, and her white husband knows nothing about her past or where she comes from. But even though their lives are as different as they can be, their fates remain intertwined, and readers get to see how their children's storylines intersect and combine. Throughout the story, Britt uses multiple generations of the family to create a story filled with complex discussions on race, origins, and how one person's decision can have lasting influence into the next generation. That's goosebumps right there. I adored this book, you guys. It was so good. I loved how complex and provocative and compassionate the writing was. You know, I think as readers, we judge the characters and sometimes the decisions they make. It's just like a natural reflex. But that judgment was never written out on the page here. It's all left up to the reader to decide. 
I cannot tell you enough. This book was just so deep and beautifully done. And I really hope you carve out some pool time this summer to pick it up. All right, we're on to number four. Oh, guys, this was a good one. Bring Me Back by B.A. Paris. B.A. Paris and Leanne Moriarty and Ruth Ware were among my first favorite mystery writers. So here, here you go, guys. It's another thriller. I think I love thrillers so much because they're just such a far cry from my everyday life. I love a book you can't put down. I love it. So here we go again with another thriller. If you haven't read anything by B.A. Paris, start here and thank me later because her books are just, I mean, so good page turners. I've never read a bad one. The story starts out with young and in love Finn and Layla on vacation. After making a quick pit stop at a gas station, Finn hops out, locks the doors behind him, and when he returns, Layla is gone, never to be seen again. At least that's the story he told the police. Flash forward 10 years, Finn is engaged to Layla's sister, Ellen. Huh? Right? Losing Layla brought them close together, yet there's still something about Ellen that Finn has never understood. He wants to believe that she's the one for him, his happily ever after, but some kind of sixth sense tells him not to trust her. And not too long before the big day, Finn gets a phone call. Someone has spotted Layla hiding in plain sight. What? Then there's some weird stuff that happens. Long lost items from Layla's past turn up, emails from strangers who know too much, secret messages, clues, warnings. So if Layla is alive, what does she want? And where has she been this whole time? I love the suspense of the story and I never quite knew what was going on or who did what until the very end. It is definitely a page turner. So when you pick this one up, know that you won't be able to put it down until it's finished. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Can't wait for you guys to read this one. And lastly, we are going to exit the thriller category and step into nonfiction. This is one of my top three favorite books of all time. And uh, there is actually a new kind of sequel um, that I'll tell you about as well. So this one is called Essentialism by Greg McCune. This book is so phenomenal. I read it in early 2020. Um, I just knew that it would be one of those books that I would reach for again and again, like when I'm feeling overwhelmed and need to be reminded of what actually matters to me. What I found in this book that these theories I have about simplifying life, about taking complex things and situations and making them easier, these these theories that I've just always innately had, Greg approaches them in a different way. He has the same thought about life and he approaches them in a a very like deep dive scientific sort of way. So Greg shows that the concept of essentialism is far more than a time management strategy or a productivity technique. It is a way to figure out what is absolutely essential in your life, gives you permission to eliminate everything that isn't, So you can then make the highest possible contribution toward the things that really matter. Sound familiar? Greg and I see eye to eye on a lot of things. And I love how this book forces you to apply really selective criteria for what is actually essential and then decide where you want to spend your precious time and energy. And here is the key. It's about doing less but better in every area of our lives. Can I just say that again? It's about doing less but better in every area of our lives. Yes, 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 yes. That is what I want. I love this concept so much, and it has helped me focus on what needs my attention each day and live life intentionally and with purpose. And I want that for you too. So be sure to add this to your summer list and then check out Greg's new book called Effortless because that one is amazing too. We read it in May for the Emily Lay Book Club on Facebook. P.S. We read a new book over there every month. So hop over there and join in on the fun. Okay, one more bonus book, you guys. Um, it is a beautiful yellow book that I'm sure you've never heard of before. It is called Growing Boldly, Dare to Build a Life You Love by me, Emily Lay. 
had to throw this one in there. If you are looking to use some time this summer to sit down and figure out how to take your life to the next level and grow into a new place in your life, then I think you might want to check out this book. I share how following a simple spark slowly but surely helped me shape my career into something that fit my life and not the other way around. I'm so passionate about this book. So if you haven't picked up your copy yet, you can get it wherever you buy your books today. All right, that is it, you guys. Those are some of my favorite books of the moment. I really enjoyed this podcast a lot. I love books. I love the way that they just give us a moment away from every day. Some of them help us learn things and take them back into our lives. And some of them just help us get a break from every day. Um, I just, I'm such a, a bookworm and I have just enjoyed this one so much. So expect more of these in the future. All right, go grab a book and find a cozy corner and some quiet time to go read for a bit. You have earned it for sure. Before we close out this episode today, I would like to pray a little blessing over you as you take on the week. May you find the time to feed your own mind, body, and soul. May you create your own pockets of peace each and every day. And may you find a shared soul in the stories you find on the page and the ones living all around you. And as always, I want to give you a simple tip you can take and try out in your life as you go back into the world. This week, your task is this. Is there a book on your wish list you've had for a while, but you've not made the time to pick up? Sister, the time is now. I want you to head to the library or your local bookstore and pick up one summer read. It doesn't matter what book you grab, fiction, nonfiction, an audiobook, whatever, just pick whatever speaks to your heart and mind. And even if you can't dive into that book right away, there's so much joy in knowing that a great book is waiting for you whenever you have a quiet moment. Thank you for listening to the Simplified Podcast. I hope you find some time to relax this summer with an ice cold lemonade and one of these amazing books. You can find show notes for this episode at emilylay.com slash podcast, where you can check out links and resources I mentioned here, and you can shop the Simplified brand of planners and products. Plus, for more simplicity tips, you can find me on Instagram at Emily Lay and at Simplified. And did you know that you can watch the Simplified podcast on video? It's true. They're so easy to share with friends, too. Head over to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Simplified by Emily Lay and subscribe today so you never miss an episode. And one more thing, if you are loving this podcast, would you please do me a quick favor? I would love it if you'd hop over to Apple Podcasts and leave a glowing review of our show because that really, really, really helps us get the word out about the show and into the hands of more people who would enjoy it. All right, that's it for today. Thanks so much for listening, you guys. Bye.